Sports Talk Chicago. Here with John Zaglul, and we are back and ready for today's special guest. He's the digital content manager and Chicago Cubs reporter for the Marquee Sports Network. Please welcome Tony Andraki to the program. Tony, great to have you on. How are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for being here. Um, how would you describe this Cubs team right now? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, no particular word comes to mind. I mean, they're banged up, but it feels a little like a cop-out because almost every team in baseball is banged up right now. You, you look at the injured list for, you know, 20-something of the 30 teams, and it's like, wow, like they're missing a lot of guys, even if they're not super impactful guys. They're just, you know, they're at, at teams are at the number five or number four at a certain position, and the Cubs certainly are that in their backup catcher role. They're on, on to their, like their fourth backup catcher right now. So, you know, they're certainly banged up. They definitely haven't hit their stride. Um, you know, they were playing so well in May, basically the best month that they've had since 2016 was came in May. June has been a lot tougher against good opponents, good pitching. They haven't played anywhere near as well as they did in May, mostly because the offense has kind of disappeared a bit this month. So I, I think there's a team that um, has another level, and it's another level that I think we'll see. Maybe not necessarily in June because the schedule's tough, but uh, something that we'll probably see maybe next month in, in July or potentially um, in a couple weeks here. Are they true contenders or is this a weak division or both? What do you think? I think it's both. Uh, it, it is definitely a weak division. And you look around and the Cubs are the only team in the division with uh, a positive run differential. So, and the Brewers, I mean, talk about the Cubs' offensive woes. The Brewers are are right up there, too. Um, they're towards the bottom of the league just all season in terms of just offensive categories. Uh, the the Cardinals have had trouble, obviously, with injuries. They have a negative 38 run differential at the time of, of this recording here. Uh, Jack Flaherty is down. So, I think the division is certainly a factor. Uh, the, the Cubs definitely are true contenders in my mind. The fact that they've been able to piece this together with the injuries in the rotation and missing, you know, 40% of their rotation for two weeks there with Elzelay and Trevor Williams still out and still being able to piece it together. The, this, the offense, even though it's gone through a little bit of a lull this month, still has six all-stars in it, uh, some stud players, the potential to really get going, especially when pieces like Nico Horner and Matt Duffy come back, the contact guys. And then I think the bullpen is one of the top in the game and the way Ross utilizes them is an absolute weapon. So uh, I think the Cubs are definitely contenders uh, and I do think it's a weak division. So I think it's kind of a, a little bit of both that's coming to a head here that will make the Cubs a very interesting team this summer. Tony Andraki here on Sports Talk Chicago. Tony, what's been the main problem with the Cubs hitting? What have you seen? I, th I think it's mostly the contact, as we said. It's, you know, they they haven't gotten guys on base enough this month. And, again, they're facing some really good teams. Like, I just wrote about it for MarquiseForceNetwork.com. Like, this month is basically every opponent is in the top 10 or at least the top half of the league in pitching. And they just face the Marlins, Indians, uh, Padres, Giants are all right up there. The Mets are number one in baseball and Team ERA. And the Cubs had a four-game series against them. So I do think that's a factor, but it's definitely the strikeouts. They're really, really missing guys like Duffy and Nico Horner. When those two were playing consistently, that's when the offense really turned in late April, early May. That's when we saw this team have so much fight and, and come back in games, even if they were down two or three runs early and getting guys home from third base with less than two outs and just overall not striking out as much. You're not seeing a double digit strikeout every night. And that to me is the biggest thing. They, they're just not putting the ball in play enough consistently right now. And uh, I, obviously it's something they're working on. It's something they you know, own up to and admit as well. But that's the biggest thing is they just went for so long, you know, basically starting in the New York series and then kind of going throughout the, the Miami series as well at home. They just weren't getting guys on base. They were, you know, they'd get one guy on and hit a two-run homer, and that'd be the only offense for the day. So um, now they've, against Cleveland, they were able to get some guys on base, actually get some guys home, not via the home run. So, you know, they're not as reliant on the long ball, uh, but they obviously need to keep that moving forward as the season wears on here. How concerning is it to you that Baez and Haps 
specifically are just really struggling right now? Yeah, I think Baez is a is a guy that I don't really worry about it as much because we know he goes through these ups and downs. He's always been a very, very streaky hitter, and he's going to strike out a ton even when he's going well. So I think that's that's always a um, a possibility. But he's also leading the team in RBI. He finds a way to get the job done. He had a great at-bat against Cleveland in that uh, four-run sixth-inning rally in the second game of that series. So that was huge to, to drive a double down the left field line. So, and then when you consider the fact that he's been playing like incredible defense the last few weeks, especially that Miami series, I, I feel like whatever Javi gives you on offense is definitely a bonus. Um, they need him to, to get back to form, but he will. He's proven that time and time again that he'll go through a hot stretch. Hap to me is the one that's the bigger um, concern, I guess. He's had almost 200 plate appearances. He's, he's only hitting about 180. He's still drawing some walks and has hit some homers. But, yeah, you know, I, I asked David Ross actually about it a few days ago. and He said it just seems like Hap is rolling over a lot of grounders, which isn't a good sign for him. He usually hits the ball in the air a lot and and using the whole field. And that just hasn't been happening this year. It's kind of funny because Hap was the guy last year. He was the guy that came in the leadoff spot. He was the guy that solidified the the rest of the lineup when when Javi, when Bryant, when Rizzo, when Contreras, when these other guys were maybe struggling and not at the level that they wanted to be in 2020, it was Hap and Hayward that were like the two guys that carried the offense. And this year, both guys have, have really struggled to get things going and uh, become a consistent offensive force. So, and we saw it. Hap didn't start either game against Cleveland. It's not like he's even being double switched in the games right now either. So, that definitely bears watching moving forward. It is half playing time, and if he's able to get things going here with the offense. This might be a crazy thought, but could he be demoted? Is that is that a possibility? I think it is a possibility, sure. Um, I don't see that happening, to be honest. I don't really think the Cubs have a ton of better options right now uh, that would come up. I mean, he's a guy that, that can obviously work through it. He's proven it time and time again that he is, yeah, you know, he has a pretty good track record. He is capable of hitting major league pitching. The the rib injury certainly derailed things. Like he got off to a slow start, but as he even said in April, the he was he wasn't really getting the baseball lock. He was joking that he needs to sacrifice a chicken or something to to get the baseball guys on his side because he was hitting the ball hard and it was kind of just going right at guys. His expected numbers were way better than they should be. And then he got hurt with that collision with Nico Horner in Cincinnati. So I, I think ever since then, he's just struggled to get back into rhythm. So it's possible they would send him down. I, I don't think they want to go with a Jake Marizic, Chris Bryant, only platoon in center field right now. Um, I, I think finding playing time will be difficult for Hat, but I'm not so sure there's much of a benefit of sending him back down to AAA again. He's, he's done that before. He's made changes to his swing. I think it's more about a, a veteran player getting through the slump that he's in and Ross trying to find the right spots and the playing time for him right now. Are you concerned about Chris Bryant? He was hot, obviously, and he's kind of come down crashing to earth as well. What do you think about him? He looked really good in the Cleveland series. Uh, He drew a couple of walks and David Ross was talking before Tuesday's game. He's like, yeah, you know, I could see Bryant getting hot really soon here. And then sure enough, Bryant goes out and hits a homer, drew another walk as well. And, I think that was the the big thing was the walks. The home runs always nice, and it ended a uh, the longest drought. It was 49 at bats where Chris Bryant had not had an extra base hit, which was the longest drought of his career. Wow. So definitely the power showing up, but it, but it, it is the walks. He admitted that he was chasing a little bit more because of the way other teams were pitching him, and they just weren't giving him as much to 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 hit. He was the only guy that was really consistently hitting for the Cubs in, in April and May and this consistent weapon. And that's also kind of why you saw Matt Duffy hitting behind Bryant at times. Bryant was doing so well at the beginning of the season and Ross liked Duffy's contact behind him in the lineup. So it is the the kind of, they always compare it to the natural ebbs and flows of the season. I think that's what we're seeing from Bryant. I, I don't think he's hurt or anything. Certainly getting hit with a pitch in New York on the hand uh, affected him at least a little bit physically, but He's a guy that that's coming back around here, and I'm really curious to see how he performs in L.A. Because he even mentioned he always loves hitting in L.A. Feels like he sees the ball really well. 
So I'm anxious to see how he performs in this four game series against the Dodgers. Is he an MVP candidate right now? I would say no right now. He's definitely a candidate. I wouldn't give him the MVP at the moment just because of uh, his slump in, in June for the first three weeks of this month. Uh, his, his numbers have fallen off a bit. But, I mean, he's certainly on pace. He's on pace for, I think, like 32 homers, right around 100 RBI, uh, like 95-ish runs with a 370 on base. So he's definitely right up there. I, I think what helps with KB with uh, the MVP voting – I don't vote on it this year, but for those that do, I think his versatility because he really is the MVP of this Cubs team this year. The, the ability to play first base when Anthony Rizzo gets a night off, like we saw Tuesday night, or when Rizzo's hurt, but then to play third base, to play center field, as we mentioned, when Hap is, is on the IL or just struggling, to play left or right, to play wherever, to hit wherever in the lineup Ross needs. It's been so incredibly valuable to this Cubs team. It's really an immeasurable value. So I, I think he's absolutely a contender. I don't think he is the MVP at the moment. But, uh, again, we, we catch him on a hot stretch here, and he finishes the year in a hot stretch. I could certainly see him in a conversation. Let me ask you this, because before the season began, there were some talks about Bryant possibly being traded. We didn't hear Jed Hoyer say that the Cubs will be buyers at the deadline. So where do you see the Cubs now when it comes to the trade deadline and Bryant and how they're going to approach it? I think they're absolutely buyers. If you ask me right now, uh, things could change in a week or two. I'm not sure exactly, uh, you know, if the Cubs went say like, Oh, and 10 over the next 10 games, then yeah, sure. Things might change a lot. I don't anticipate that happening. I don't think they anticipate that happening either. So I, I would definitely look at them as buyers and there's a way too where they can, they can be buyers without having to give up the farm. They don't have to do these big Roldis Chapman, Chapman type trades or uh, the getting rid of Eli Jimenez and Dylan Cease and, you know, Glaber Torres. They don't have to do that. They can, they, they've been able to add pieces like acquiring Nick Castellanos a couple of years ago. And, and just in general, some of these other guys they've, they've gotten at the trade deadline have been impactful guys without giving up a ton. So I think that's what they'll do. I think they'll look for a starter, maybe another backup catcher since they've been so banged up in that area. And then probably a reliever or two as well. But in, in a position player group, unless one of these other guys goes down with injury, I think they'll probably stay pat there. But I, I really, I think things would have to take a very serious turn over the next five weeks for the Cubs to be trading guys like Brian Bias, Rizzo, or Peterson or Kimbrell, guys who are free agents at the end of the year. I, I don't see that happening right now. Are you concerned, though, about short-sightedness and maybe buying this year, barely winning the division, and then moving on to next year and having nobody and having the team having to reset a bit? No, I, I don't think that's a, the concern right now because everything – Hoyer and Theo Epstein have ever talked about when they've been here, and you've heard it from other organizations, every season is sacred. The Washington Nationals, remember in 2019, they got hot at the right time in the regular season and then in the postseason, and they won World Series. So I think the focus right now, maybe 70% plus of, of the allotted focus from Hoyer's front office should be and probably is focused on this year. And then they'll figure out all those questions about the roster in the winter. And they would love to, to have Javi Baez linked to a 10-year deal and figure that out in the middle of the season. But the players have said they don't want to talk. They want to focus on baseball, which makes sense, too. So, you know, I, I think in a perfect world, sure, they'd have some of these guys locked up. But I don't think it's the end of the world to try to figure that out. They'll still have from whenever they're out of the postseason or, you know, if they do win the World Series, they'll still have some time before free agency starts. And then they'll certainly have, you know, a, an inside track on all of these guys. Like you really think, especially with Wrigley back at 100%, that Bryant, Baez, Rizzo, Peterson, that all these guys aren't going to remember the, how the organization treated them, how Wrigley was with all the fans and everything else. So, um, and, and again, like we said too, like about the trade deadline, I don't think you're getting a ton of players. Like really it's, it's been since 2017 that when the Cubs gave up Eloy and C's that you're not seeing these top Uber prospects being traded at the deadline. So the Cubs, if they're going to give up on some of these guys, what are they going to get in return is look at what they got for Darvish. They got a really nice haul of including Zach Davies, but then four young guys 
who are teenagers who are years away and the Cubs have a real shot this year. They All they have to do is get into the playoffs and then they can keep moving forward. You know, if they get hot at the right time with this bullpen, the offense is swinging the bat, they certainly can make a deep run. So I, I don't think it would be short-sighted to, to go for it this year to maybe trade away some, some lesser known prospects to get some depth and then play your hand this winter and see how it goes. Does the starting pitching concern you when it comes to the postseason? Yeah, it does for sure. I think, uh, I think right now, if the postseason started tomorrow, I think you can figure it out. You know, you have Kyle Hendricks that you can count on for five or six innings in a postseason start for sure. If not more, he, he's obviously capable of that. Uh, I think you have Edward Elzelide, but with him, maybe innings will become a factor as the season wears along. And then I think you have the combination of Davies or Arietta, where, you know, pretty early on, if either of those guys are able to give you something and you could have the other as a potential piggyback out of the bullpen too. But it's usually pretty clear with both of those guys in the first or second inning, if they have it on that day. And if not, and then with, with the long guys in the bullpen, I mean, Keegan Thompson has been a, a revelation and, uh, you know, Alec Mills down there and Tommy Nance, Ryan Tapera have gone multiple innings. When Justice Deal comes back from injury, he can go multiple innings. And then you have, you know, Winkler and Tapera, Chafin, Kimbrell. Like the bullpen can really mix and match and the way Ross utilizes them in the postseason. So I think they certainly could. To me, the starting rotation is a bigger deal to get to the postseason because some of these guys are going to wear down and there will be concerns over innings of, of maybe – everybody besides Kyle Hendricks at this point, like we're not really quite sure. So I think you need more starters to get yourself to, to the top of the division and to the postseason if you're the Cubs. So I think probably looking at acquiring at least one and, and maybe, you know, taking a flyer on like a veteran, like Cole Hamels is still a free agent, for example, I'm not saying the Cubs are linked to him, but that would make a ton of sense because he has a history here and he's a guy that could potentially give you injuries and, uh, I'm sorry, give you innings and you don't have to give up a ton of assets for him. So that's what I see the Cubs doing and what I think they're going to do. It, it's a bigger deal in the regular season. Is there anyone in the rotation right now that you think they should definitely move on from like Jake Arrieta or Zach Davies? What do you think? No, I mean, I think the Davies certainly not. He had a such a good stretch from the beginning of May until really the last start against the Marlins. Arietta and Trevor Williams have both struggled. Um, you know, Arietta has really just had a couple of bad outings that have contributed to everything. Um, you know, the pitching with the blister in Cincinnati, pitching when he was sick in San Francisco, those have really inflated his numbers. But yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, he would tell you and the Cubs would tell you that overall he hasn't been pitching and going as deep into games as he wanted to. That's something that he mentioned as well. So that's a big factor. I, I don't, think the Cubs are moving on from him or anything like that but Trevor Williams was a guy that before the appendectomy that he had and he's missed uh he's gonna miss when it's all said and done about five weeks or four or five weeks here he was a guy that I think there were some questions about and the Cubs weren't saying it but I think it was fair to question how long of a leash he was going to continue to have in the in the rotation when guys like Alec Mills or Keegan Thompson or some of these other guys could potentially slot in so Williams, when he comes back, assuming he comes back healthy here, is is a question mark. But I think the Cubs liked him a lot for a reason. They love his pitch mix, his ability to use all of his pitches and work up and down, in and out. So, um, but I, but yeah, I don't think there's anything like guaranteed or set in stone. I, I do think Williams can be a guy that can eat a ton of innings for them. Uh, but again, didn't pitch necessarily the way they were hoping he would at the start of the season. Where do you see the Cubs going then with all of this said here? I think it's going after another starter or two. I think it's getting another uh, bullpen guy, and, and I think it's trying to get a backup catcher. And and I honestly, I do think that they are going to be right there in the division fight throughout the rest of the year. I think it will come down to them in Milwaukee. I certainly wouldn't put Cincinnati or St. Louis out of the race, but St. Louis desperately needs some starting pitching and, Cincinnati overall just hasn't pitched. I mean, they've given up. I think they have one of the worst ERAs in, bit in uh, the National League outside of just the, the Arizona Diamondbacks who have really been struggling. So um, I don't really see those two as necessarily contenders at the moment. I think it's more of Cubs-Brewers, but 
and right now it, it looks too like the wild pair teams are going to come out of the West. So Cubs best path to October is certainly the division. That's what they're going for. And I do believe that they're going to be fighting for it throughout the rest of the season.